This is actually a really nice looking pub. I'm trying to imagine it if these pubs would exist during the rough time that this game would like kind of take place, I guess. Well, this game, it doesn't really have a direct analog to any era in real history, because it's... But we all like I mean, like, they kind of have this hand. early industrial revolution because of whale oil technology. Mm. I'm going to come out with you. We've been building a coalition. I'm just, like, I'm trying to place, like, if, even if this was mid 1800s, I'm trying to see if this would be, like, out of place. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily. And That's Lord Pendleton. He's. We've got big plans, but we can't do any of it without you. And that's Admiral, Hav Admiral Havelock. Your ability in a fight. Drinking what appears to be a what appears to be a pint of bass. To help you destroy the men who murdered the. The beer, not liquefied Sorry. fish. You must be exhausted. Although considering how crappy Dunwall is, who knows? After you for cover, but before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. He's challenging at times, but his industrious mind buys him that right. Yes, Piero's as much an artist as a technician. He's going to be crafting the gear you'll need. Go talk to him, and then get some sleep. All right. We can talk more when you've rested. Admiral Havelock is, uh, that's John Slattery. The voice of John Slattery, who is... He was... Good to have you with us, somewhere or other on Mad Men. Others, he was Howard Stark in Iron Man 2. Who's done his service for the crown. Oh! And, um, I did not realize that. And he was also on a single episode of the short... the tragically short-lived sitcom Ned and Stacy. Which ha starring Thomas Hayden Church and that chick who was later on Will and Grace. No one, one? no one remembers that show except me, but... Oh, you mean which chick? Yeah. The, uh... Was she Grace? Yeah, it was Grace. It was the one who, d who... The one who wasn't the really squeaky-voiced lady. Okay, good, because I hate that girl. Deborah Messing! Yeah. Now I remember. They made a lot of jokes in, on Will and Grace about her not being... well endowed. Did they? Yeah. I'm sad to say I watched more Will and Grace than any straight person should. Blood from the eyes. Blood from the eyes. That's one of the symptoms of the plague, actually. You bleed from your eyes. That's kind of the warning sign that it's reached its terminal phase, in fact. Yeah, I can't imagine blood from the eyes ever being a good thing. Now, Lord Pendle... Although... Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. About to meet somebody. Oh, this guy. That's cool. Crafting your weapons and gear, all custom work for you. I will create the brilliant pervert du Piero. You'll you'll get some context as to what I mean by that later. No, this cannot happen now. The tank of whale oil is running. Will you get a new tank from upstairs, please, while I hold this in place? Be careful. My old co-worker had a daughter who had these weird blood problems. Yeah. She would bleed from the eyes. Really? Mm-hmm. But she was fine. Like, she's like, it just, like, her vision would go red. And then she would, like, just, like, blood would start pouring out of her tear ducts. But it, like, it wasn't, she was in good health and everything? Yeah, she was in good health. It was just some sort of weird thing that when she had high blood pressure, because... Like, even though she was relatively healthy, she was not the fittest kid. Okay. Like, when she, when her blood pressure started to ratchet up, it would just start leaking out of her oh, eyes and pores. Oh! Fascinating. Just get it, near it was the weird. Magnetism will do the rest. Perfect. Thank you, Cole. You may be surprised to learn who this voice actor is, but I'll tell you when. I'll let him tell you his piece first. You're a no. wanted man, so yeah. everyone in Much better and better. Your face, but this ah. I will argue with you, sir. If you just hold still, fitness. Yeah, this is the mask we saw on the title screen. Can you see normally? Now I'm Doctor Doom, basically. Out of the line. Yeah. Every hey, kid's dream. Better now. I could create. Fool. Anything. Doom does as he pleases. Gear, weapons, munitions. There's this hilarious. Old school Marvel comic where, like, Namor was touring Doom around his palace, and um, Doom shows him that uh, Namor shows him. Oh, hold on, hold on. I, I should explain the uh, this inventory thing. Uh, Pietro, you talk to him, he can, one, he sells you items and ammunition. It's like, let's see, you can buy crossbow bolts, sleep bolts, spring razor, which is like a, like I said, a sort of a proximity mine that sprays, like, 
barbed wire at people. Grenades. Rewire tools let you rewire thing like things. It's almost like like hacking stuff, basically. And then you can get upgrades. Like see crossbow, accuracy, range, reload, sleep dart. Better sleep darts. And you can find blueprints throughout the game that will give you access to more things that you can potentially buy for upgrades. Those are for your weapons, and there's also just for other equipment, as you can see. And this is what I'm going to be grabbing, mask optics, which basically, mm. gives you a, basically gives you a zoom function. And you can later upgrade that to get an even better zoom function. And as you see, things like more ammunition capacity, more bone charms. Bone charms are these little items that give you small like status boosts or improvements to your abilities. For now on, we're going to get the mask optics. Because I like... Which, for some reason, also amplifies your hearing. Which doesn't make much sense, but it's helpful. You must be hmm. exhausted. I okay. advise that you get some sleep. Your life will get even more difficult soon. You should rest while you can. That is Brad Dorif, Who you may know as Chucky from the Child's Play movies. Very well. <laughs> No the voice of the voice of Chucky, not the not the actual physical dummy. I should understand. The dummy was actually an un uncredited appearance by Tom Cruise. Little known fact. <laughs> well, they needed someone of the appropriate stature. But yeah, that actually, and he's also um, he was in Deadwood. Oh, and I believe he was yeah he was a uh, Grima Worm Tongue. Whoop. Ooh, hold on. Oh. Let's see. Excerpt from a recent book detailing Sokolov's machines. Remember Sokolov from the first from previously, the, the Russian guy. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages of Sokolov's technologies is that as they share the same magnetic socket for the tanks of processed whale oil they use as fuel. When a tank is exhausted, another can be plugged into place with ease. And the process is simple enough that any common workman or even the lower guardsman of the city watch can handle the task. This applies to the arc pylon and wall of light security systems, as well as the powered carriages used for transport by those few who are wealthy enough to afford them. The only obvious downside of Sokolov's designs is the volatility of the tanks themselves. A few incidents have occurred, resulting in damage to property or bodily harm whenever one of the tanks has exploded. Now, we'll find out soon enough what walls of light and arc pylons are. But they are... Whale oil, this whale oil stuff is basically the, 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 like the focal point of the entire economy of this society. It powers their, all their, you know, their machinery. And like I said, it's given them a sort of industrial, like, a sort of, like, kind of magical industrial revolution. And the, the whales, they're not, like, earthly whales. They're... They're these mm. magical creatures, and they, they, they've got all these weird tentacles and shit. It's... You'll, you'll we'll see more later. What? A second... Excerpt from a series of newspaper articles from prominent natural philosophers by Piero Joplin. It is through no fault of my own that the average citizen has expressed a preference for Sokolov's elixir over my own formula, sold as Piero's remedy, a name I did not choose, if you must know the truth. The public has spoken its usual message of idiocy, spending their coin as a means of selecting Sokolov's formula over mine, which I believe to be equal, if not superior. Much has been made over the popularity of these concoctions as a means of resisting the remarkable new plague. I say remarkable because this strain works with an e efficiency we have not seen in the history of the Empire. This plague, now making its way through the city of Dunwall, is unrivaled in its effectiveness. I have studied it within the blood of those so afflicted, and it is nearly perfect. Elegant, in fact. This, guy's weird, this guy seems is weirdly in love with his disease. Oh. <laughs> and while it is true that Piero's remedy and Sokolov's elixir are known to protect the body against the plague equally, my own has properties not fully understood, which relate to the mind itself and the spirit. And it is in this way that my formula wins out. Here is where one should pay attention to this contest. For you see, Sokolov's elixir, with its emphasis on the brute, animal body, is a crass goo better suited for livestock. The subtle and secret variants in the key ingredients making up Piero's remedy ensure that it works on the higher functions that separate humankind from the mindless, blue-jawed hagfish swimming in the Renhaven River. Now basically what, what that means in practice is that the Sokolov's remedies restore health, and the Piero's remedy... The Sokolov's elixir restores health, Piero's remedy restores um, mana. Uh. Piero's request is denied. Piero, no, I will not sign off on these purchases. A bag of powdered crystal. Tivian ore. What's wrong with the metals in Gristal? Okay, that's that's the name of the island, Gristal. Finally, at long... King Sparrow Feathers. 
If you need feathers, sacrifice your own pillow. Maybe at the Academy, everything you needed was paid for by tariff and handed out willy-nilly. But this is my bar, or what's left of it, and we're operating on a budget. We're running low on oil, food, elixir, building materials, and everything else, so you've got to slow down. While I'm footing the bill, I will not approve your purchases unless they're absolutely required. No more copper wire or special herbs. If you need those things, go out and scavenge them. Half the city is in ruins, so no one is going to miss any of the odd crap you seem to need. Admiral Havelock. And this is basically the justification for why you're scrounging, you know, items all over the place. <laughs> you're desperately short on money, so you need to, like, loot stuff to finance your whole operation. <clears throat> and, so um, I, get, I guess I can see why Sokolov's elixir is more popular popular. If nobody else can use magic, they won't. Yeah! <laughs> the, the benefits of Piero's, it's not really relevant to most people's lives. Oh, there's some stuff up here. Oh, Dead counter responsibilities. Excerpt from a new manual on City Watch procedures. Commissioned by the Lord Regent in the face of the growing plague crisis, the dead counter is a position that will only be given to officers, usually of junior or middle grade. In most cases of edict or curfew enforcement, these officers will defer to the acting officer on duty. However, any dead counter will have command in situations related to the plague and the handling of the dead, including those with late-stage plague symptoms, called weepers in common parlance. Starting in the month of rain, interested officers may apply for the test and, if accepted, for the two-week training tour. Pay will be administered in coin and rations of elixir at one and one-half normal pay grade. So they've got they've got enough dead bodies piling up that they need like a, an elite core of corpse counting city watch guards to deal with it. Hmm. Interesting. There's another. There's quite a few interesting failed experiments. Excerpt from a se excerpt from a series of lectures on natural philosophy by Piero Joplin. <coughs> of course, I have attempted to improve upon Sokolov's designs. Of course, and why not? After all, it is likely that his thinking was influenced in some small way by our time together at the Academy. We are all part of a community, striving to unknot the mysteries of the cosmos. Even, am even those among us who possess the greatest minds are often led to a fruitful line of consideration by, how does one say it, our intellectual subordinates. Sokolov is no exception to this, despite the glamour of genius he has cast over the aristocracy. And further, it is true that many of my experience have failed. experiments have failed. No need to gossip about it behind my back in your social clubs and in the very chambers of the Academy itself. Great ambition requires risks. You may laugh now at my door to nowhere, but someday you will not. Your children will see it as commonly as you see the electric lamps lighting our streets at night. But a few sh short years ago, you would have laughed at Sokolov's arc pylon or wall of light. Your laughter, your condescending smiles, they are nothing but evidence of your own limited imagination. To the best of my knowledge, they never elaborate on what the door to nowhere is, but I just love—I just love the idea of something called that. Hmm. I don't, maybe I don't know, some sort of teleportation device or something. Doors nowhere. 